Dallas Keuchel is a two-time All-Star, five-time Gold Glove pitcher, and the 2015 Cy Young winner. But recently, he was just let go from his third team this season. Now, in his prime, Dallas was absolutely shut down. But over the last two seasons, it's becoming pretty apparent that his time in the major leagues is just about over. So let's take a look back throughout his career, see what made him so great at his peak, and try to figure out why there's been such a dramatic drop off in his performance recently. But first, if you're a fan of baseball, however you wanna show some support to the channel, I appreciate any of it. Whether that's liking the video, subscribing to the page, just if you enjoy baseball, we're gonna talk about a lot of different baseball content here. So stick around, be a part of this, and don't miss out. Now, Dallas was drafted in the seventh round of the 2009 draft out of the University of Arkansas after his junior year. And looking through his minors numbers, he progressed pretty well. The only times he really seemed to struggle was his first go around at AA and AAA at the end of the seasons, respectively. But then the next year, when he came back to those same spots, he was dominant. Now the Astros promoted him to the big league club on June 17th, 2012, when he made his debut at 24 years old. And throughout his first two seasons, it took him a little bit to find his footing. Between 2012 and 2013, in 47 games, he made 38 starts, went 239 innings with a 5-2 ERA, and 161 strikeouts to 91 walks. Allowing an 816 OPS is a really good way to be a not good pitcher and uh, that earned him a 78 ERA plus in those two years, meaning he was 22% worse than the average major league pitcher. But in the 2014 season, this dude established himself as one of the top pitchers in baseball. And from 2014 to 2020, he went on an absolute tear. This dude in 175 starts went 1,126 and a third innings with a 3-2-5 ERA over that entire time. He racked up 21.8 war according to baseball reference during this time. And I mean, having a 662 OPS against and a 125 OPS plus, despite not really being much of a strikeout guy, like that's a good way to do that. And I gotta say, as a Mariners fan, having to watch him carve up the kind of bad lineups that we were putting out over some of those years, it was really frustrating. Fuck the Astros, I fucking hate those guys. Despite winning four gold gloves, being a two-time All-Star, and winning the 2015 Cy Young, all with the Astros, they decided to let him walk at 30 years old after the 2018 season, and after holding out for a multi-year deal, he ended up signing on June 7th with the Braves for a one-year $13 million deal. And then following that season, he got a three-year $55.5 million deal with the Chicago White Sox. Now, that first year of that contract worked out pretty well. That was still through the 2020 season where he was still on top of his game. But starting in 2021, this is where it all went downhill for Dallas. And combined between last year and this year, in 46 games, 44 starts, he's gone 222.2 innings pitched with a 6.35 ERA. Now it's easy to just chalk this up to he's getting up there in age as to why he's just kind of falling off and not being the same pitcher. But let's take a look a little bit deeper and see if there's something that's contributing to why his numbers have gone up so high. Now, Dallas has always been a ground ball pitcher. Throughout his career, he's got a 57.5% ground ball percentage, when over that time, the MLB average has been 43.8. Now, for a guy who predicates his game on keeping the ball out of the air, uh, you can probably guess what happens when he's struggling. The more the other team can get underneath the ball, the better they're probably gonna do against Dallas. And this was evident all the way back even in his minor league career, his worst stretch throughout his entire minor league career was his first go at AAA, where he had a 7-5 ERA. You can guess what happened that year. It was the highest fly ball percentage of his minor league career, 31.1%. 
Every other season other than that, he was between 25.2 and 27.2. His first two years in the majors when he struggled, he had a 21.1% fly ball percentage. That definitely contributed to more runs and him getting hit around more. When he was in his absolute peak, that run from 2014 to 2020, he posted a 59.3% ground ball rate and only a 13.2% fly ball percentage. The worst year of that stretch was 2016 when he had a 4.55 ERA. That also went along with his highest fly ball percentage over that stretch at 16.8%. And there seemed to be a magic number for Dallas of about 15% fly balls that once he started approaching there, that's when his numbers started kind of going up. Anything around there, he started getting into the high threes. Below, he was, you know, threes and twos. And then this season when he was above, just like every other season when it gets above, his ERA went up higher. And then it's not really a surprise at this point then that from 21 to 22, he's been back up to a 19.4% fly ball rate. And so this is just a pretty obvious trend for Dallas at this point. The more fly balls that he gives up, the worse that he ends up doing so it's yet to be seen whether he can get back to anything close to what he used to be there hasn't really been a drop off so much in his velocity or stuff as he's gotten older the only difference is really is that it seems that he's throwing less of his fastballs and sliders he's been throwing more cutters and more change-ups recently so maybe making a change with his pitch mix is what will get him back to that, but he's never really been a guy that relies on stuff. It's been how he attacks batters, so that's not something that you really lose as you get older. You probably get more savvy to that. You've played more baseball. You know more about the game and the batters, so... I mean, I think there's a chance that he could get back to similar numbers. Probably not, like, back to his peak, but... I mean, this is a guy that I wouldn't expect just such a sudden drop off. But leave a comment down below and let me know what you think or let me know about anything with Dallas that we talked about today. And if you enjoyed, however you want to show support to the channel, liking the video, subscribing, anything like that, I appreciate it. We're just going to talk about a lot of baseball stuff here. And if you're a fan, I think you're really going to enjoy some of the content. This has been The Mountain Visit. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one.